Number 20. A ball with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second moves at an angle 60 degrees above the positive x direction. The ball hits a vertical wall and bounces off so that it is moving 60 degrees above the negative x direction uh, with the same speed. What is the impulse delivered by the wall? Okay, so first let's start with this. What is impulse? Remember, impulse is simply the change in momentum. Okay, so I'm going to um, label impulse as J, as you will see in some textbooks. Uh, J is equal to the change in momentum. Okay, so in other words, I'll expand the change in momentum uh, to equal the mass of the object multiplied by its final velocity minus the initial velocity. Okay, so it says that uh, the initial velocity of this ball is 10 meters per second, so let's go to the picture. So it's 10 meters per second, and it's traveling at 60 degrees above the positive x direction. Right? That's basically what I have here. So now what's going to happen is it's going to travel and hit the wall. Okay. Let me draw now a coordinate system at the point of the wall here at the point of impact. And basically they say now that the ball bounces off the wall, right, so that it is uh, moving 60 degrees above the negative x direction with the same speed. Okay, so now it's traveling, yeah, this looks like 45 degrees, right? It's traveling at about 60, okay? About 60 degrees above the negative x-axis here, 60 degrees. Okay, so here's the, uh, and, and it's at the same speed, right? So we know that this is uh, 10 meters per second again, that overall vector. Uh, so here's the interesting thing. Remember, vectors can be broken up into their components, okay? Now, given uh, the components of the first vector, right, we have an x component here pointing to the right, okay? We'll call that vx, we'll call it vix, okay, for initial, and then... It has a y component, right, pointing up. Call that viy. Now, this component, right, or I should, excuse me, this vector up here also has components, right? It has an x component, which I'll point this direction, right, going to the left. Okay, we'll call that vf, right, for final velocity. So we'll call that the final velocity in the x direction. And then it also has a component on up, right? I know I bisected the 60 degrees there, but you know that this angle here correlates with that interior angle. Uh, and uh, this y component we can call vfy. Now what I want you to notice is I want you to notice the relationship between the two vectors. All right. So in the first vector, we have a positive x component. And then in the second vector, we have a negative x component, right? It's pointing to the left. In the first uh, vector, we have a positive y component. And in the second vector, we also have a positive y component. So, hmm. Impulse, as we mentioned, is talking about change in momentum. Okay, in order to have a change in momentum, you have to have a change in velocity. Right? If there's no change between these two numbers, this works out to be Zippo. And 0 times m is 0, and j is 0, meaning impulse is 0. So you're going to have some change in velocity. But the only one that will experience a change in velocity is the x direction, right? Not the y direction. The y is actually going to stay the same. Now, I know you might say, well, how the heck is that even possible? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Gravity's pulling on this thing. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I mean, realistically, okay? But it's what we're dealing with. So um, the y component also mathematically, if you look, the y components for both would be the sine, right? Because you know uh, this angle here. Right? That's the side opposite. So you're talking about sine. And uh, to find this component to be 10 times the sine of 60. And then to find this component up there would be also 10 times the sine of 60. So they're equal. Okay. The difference, though, is only in the x's. So actually, that's the key to the problem. Right. So uh, let's talk about this first triangle. I know that the uh, we're going to use cosine here to find vix. So cosine of my angle will equal the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 60, whoops, of 60 will equal the vix, all right, all over 10, right? And now solving that for vix, just simply cross multiply, this is 10 times the cosine of 60, okay? Now, that sounds good, right? Now let's do it for the second case, okay? Remember, though, this is negative here. So same thing, cos of the angle 
is equal to a over h, okay? So cosine then of 60 degrees again will equal the uh, adjacent side, which I'm going to plug in as a negative value, okay? Will equal a negative value, so negative vfx all over the hypotenuse of 10, okay? So solving for that and then distributing the negative, we should get, whoops, we should get vfx is equal to negative 10 cosine of 60 cosine of 60. Okay, so now guess what? I'm gonna plug these two things into my formula here. Okay, so let's plug this in for the initial and let's plug this in for the final. Okay, I'm gonna do the work over here on the right side. So we have the impulse being equal to the mass of the object multiplied now by the final velocity, okay, which we um, had negative. Okay, so we're gonna have negative 10 times the cosine of 60, right, times the cosine of 60, minus the initial, okay, which we said was positive now, minus 10 times the cosine of 60. Oops, cosine of 60, okay? So close that on up. And here's really the term, right? I mean, this is really what we got. So all we gotta do is now plug it in. Now you say, well, wait a minute, I don't know the mass. So hold on to that thought. Just combine the terms in the, in the brackets. So we get negative 10 times cosine of 60 minus 10 times the cosine of 60. Whoops, hold on. I plugged in the values wrong. Wonderful, negative 10 times the cosine of 60 minus 10 times the cosine of 60. And I get a negative 10, right? So here is negative 10. Hold on, negative 10. And then the impulse here would simply be, if I were to just make it look a little nicer, it would be negative 10 m, okay? Now this might not seem satisfactory, but unfortunately, you know, this is the answer. I know we wanted to have a number, but there's no way to actually find the number without knowing the mass, okay? It's just not possible. So uh, this would be the uh, final impulse, okay? Now this would be the, technically, okay, this is the impulse delivered by the wall, uh, uh, yeah, delivered by the wall. So this is the impulse delivered by the wall, okay? Now, it's negative just because, uh, actually, no, it should be uh, negative overall. Um, yeah, so this is the, this is the impulse provided um, by that wall to the ball, okay? Uh, so that would be your answer. Guys, thanks so much for ch tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and look forward to helping you in the next question. Take care.